On the screen in this moment of time, you should be able to see the authorised release certificate, also referred to as a 8130-3. Now, it's an air awareness approval type. So what that means is this form is used only to release components back to service post whatever they've had done with them I the maintenance that's been carried out whether it's been overhauled repaired and so on now the only organizations who can issue this form are those organizations approved by the FAA so the Federal Aviation Administration now to issue a true release for example the only organizations that can issue that are those organizations that have both an FAA approval and those who also have an EASA part 145 maintenance organization approval what you just need to be careful of is that not every organization in America has both an FAA approval and an EASA approval so and the only way you can verify that really is that you need to go to the the EASA website look on the forum 145 approved organizations and that should actually clarify their scope and capability and whether they can issue a dual release or not so really what I'm going to cover today in this sort of session is just to clarify, you know, one of the terms maybe in block 11 or the terms we use in block 11, how you'd recognize a, a dual release and really just clarify what the purpose of a dual release is. So first let me just go back to uh, some key things that, or key features about this form you just need to recognize. Under block 11, you can just see here, which I'm just going to highlight now for you, you can just see the importance of that really is that that's the status of work. Now within that field, there are certain sort of key terms that only can, that can only be used and only one term can be used. So just to clarify, you can either have the word overhauled, it may see uh, block 12, it may say repaired, it may say inspected and or tested. So what that means is, under like if you're familiar with the ERC requirements, you may see uh, inspected slash tested as one term, but under the FAA requirements and how they recognize it, it can be inspected, it can be tested, or it can be inspected slash tested. And what you need to verify really and be satisfied, that narrative that they may use is reflected in the remarks column. So what I mean by that, if they use the word inspected, then it should say in the remarks column, we have inspected this component, blah, 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 blah. If it's been tested only, then we've tested it in accordance with. If it's been inspected slash tested, then therefore they should explain what they've done to inspect it in accordance with and what they've tested it in accordance with. And then the final term you'll see it, it says modified. Again, that just clarifies you know, what term should be actually be used within the, that field of block 11. Now, when we just turn our attention now to block 12, the remarks column, you can see here, I'm just highlighting it for you so you can see it. I've just put in there just an example of what you may find. So really it should include detail of the work that's being carried out. And I'm just thinking about ahead of the game, boy, for example, if the component has a sub life limited item, i.e. it's uh, time dependent, then really that should be stipulated within that as well. And the purpose of that really, so it, that can be captured by the organization who's fitting it and may need to track and monitor the life of that component itself, i.e. the sub life. And I'm using an example here you may have like an overall assembly. It may include like an internal battery. That may have a part number or should have a part number. It will have a serial number and a date expired date when that battery expires and it will need to be replaced. So ideally, part of the ongoing continued air awareness, that should be specified within that field as well. So our first marker then to satisfy ourselves that this is gonna be a dual release. So it's been released under the FAA and EASA you'll see here this statement where it talks about uh, certifies at the bottom. I've just, it's obviously highlighted already for you, but it says certifies that the work specified in block 11 slash 12 was carried out in accordance with the ERSA part 145. And in respect to that work, the component is considered ready for release of service under ERSA part 145 and an approval number. And so therefore what I mean by that, that approval number is the, is the approval number that's been issued to that organization and it's unique to that organization. Likewise, if you wanted to check whether that organization had the capability to release, uh, has the approval, then therefore that number will be validated on the EASA website. So that's our first requirement. And that would indicate to me that if I was looking at goods in, that would tell me that this part is a potentially a dual release. 
Next, you'll look at block 14A. You can just see here, I'm just going to highlight that bit there on the, on the section. You can just see 14A, you've got a checkbox. It says 14 CFR 43.9 return to service. That's like our equivalent or their equivalent to our EASA uh, 145.a.50 re uh, release to service. Equivalent sort of statements. Just so you're aware, 14 means Title 14 CFR Code of Federal Regulations Part 43.9. That's what it refers to. If, again, if you, you can go and look at this regulation requirements, but I'll just tell you what that statement actually should contain and what it means. And then the second marker really, or sorry, I should say the third marker, is where you can just find here, uh, what well, I'm just trying to obviously highlight for you now, is this bit really, well, I've just put the box around it, you can see it, is the other regulation specified in block 12. Now you can see that that's checked. So that really is referring back to the statements that you can see in block 12, which I spoke or read out before. So you can see there's three markers or things you need to, uh, to satisfy yourself with. One, you've got the statements in the remarks column that certifies that the work specified in block 11 slash 12 was obviously carried out and it comes with the RSA. The second one is obviously the checkbox that the 14 CFR has been ticked. And then the other regulations specified in block 12, that also needs to be checked. Those three things would confirm that that component is a dual release. If, for example, the statement was in block 12 but the, and the checkbox was checked on the 14A, but the other reg regulation specified in block 12 checkbox was not checked or unchecked, then therefore that part is a single release. Okay, so what does this actually mean? What's the purpose of a dual release? Well, if you think about it, it basically gives the greater flexibility where that component can be fitted. So what that means is it can be that component can be fitted to both a, a FAA registered aircraft, which is referred to as the NREG, so, so it fits as any of those type of aircraft, and it can be fitted to any aircraft within the European Union, or European registered aircraft, I should say. If, for example, that box was not checked for the, on the other regulations specified in Block 12, what that means then that part could only be fitted to an unregistered aircraft. So you must not be tempted if that box is unchecked and you still have the, the statements in block 12 and fitted to an aircraft because that is incorrect. Uh, if you have any sort of queries about the form and whether it should have been completed or not or it's been missing certain things then you need to go back to the originator and clarify or get a reissue of the form itself with the correct sort of uh, changes. So just to clarify one more time, to determine when this forms a dual release or not, you need the statements in block 12, you need the 14 CFR 43 box checked, and you also need the other regulations specified in block 12. That box needs to be checked. And that's it, really. Have any sort of questions again, you know, how can you, you know, if you have any sort of questions, then drop us a line that you can see now on the screen. We'll be more than happy to help. Many thanks. Bye-bye.